Now let's take a look at the solution techniques for nonlinear equations. Now we will try to solve the nonlinear equation by using numerical methods. I will be using the shallow troughs example. Remember that that's our shallow truss. And I added a spring here so that we'll have a more stable system. That's RP. And we know that for this system, P is equal to EA over L cubed z square w plus 3 over 2 z w square plus 1 over 2 w cubed plus k s times w so in order to solve this problem numerically we will be using the following values so let e the elastic modulus be equal to 5 times 10 to the power 5 Newton millimeter square that area of the truss is equal to 100 millimeters 100 millimeter square the length of the truss is 2500 millimeter so the initial crookedness is 25 millimeters and let ks be equal to 1.35 newton per millimeter our first solution algorithm is what we call the incremental solution. Well, let's approach. Here we will not perform any iterations, but after every solution we use the the current slope so let's say that here we have p that's the w the displacement and this axis represents the load and let's assume that we want to trace a curve something like that okay so the a solution algorithm works this way we apply a load increment let's say that that load increment is delta p so i apply the load increment delta p and what i know is the values at the current state p is equal to zero that w is equal to zero so the next step is to calculate incremental displacement let's call it delta w zero using the current slope so basically what i'm doing here is i'm using this slope And by using the, that slope, I'm calculating delta W0. So right now I'm here. Now, if I write this in equation form, then delta W0 will be equal to dP over VW inverse multiplied with the load increment. And we know that dp over dw will be our tangent stiffness matrix and then delta v0 is equal to kt inverse multiplied with the load increment so we calculated delta v0 now we are at this point so we don't perform any iterations now what we are going to do, I will apply another load increment. Let's 
use the same load increment delta p so this time i'm at this point so i'll get the slope from this point and that's delta p i will use a different slope now and now i calculate delta w1 and find this point so and we continue until we apply the whole loading and here n is the number of increments so that's the simplest solution algorithm that we can uh, perform and, and if we use a very small load increments we can actually trace the full uh, load deformation uh, curve but the problem here is at the beginning of the solution we don't know how many increments we need and we don't know how much error we are getting we don't know whether this is a correct solution or it's a very bad solution or the accuracy is what we wanted to see but on the other hand applying the load with small increments give us the possibility of tracing the full load deformation path of this curve so let's put some numbers so at step one or let's not call the step but increment one the n0 and w0 for this truss element is equal to zero and let's say that delta p is equal to minus seven newtons now that's the elastic stiffness w and n0 is equal to zero then the tangent stiffness at the zeroth or the first increment will be equal to ea over l z over l squared plus the spring stiffness ks and this will give me a stiffness equal to 3.35 newton millimeter squared then delta w square so my first displacement increment will be equal to k0 inverse multiplied with delta p which is minus 7 over 3.35 and that's equal to minus 2.0896 millimeters so the total displacement will be equal to 0 minus 2.0896 which gives me minus 2.0896 millimeters and for that displacement the axial load on the stress member is ea we have the equation z over l w1 over l plus 1 over 2 w1 over l squared and that gives me a truss axial force equal to minus 445 newtons so these are the results at the end of the first increment now i can apply the second load increment so let's call it increment 2 now in that case n1 and w0 are already calculated so let's calculate k1 in that case i'm using the full equation ea over l 
z over l squared plus e a over l cubed two z w one plus w one squared plus n one over l plus k s. So in that case, my tangent stiffness after the first increment will be equal to 2.8695 Newton millimeter square. So the slope decreased now and I can calculate the displacement after the application of the second load increment. That's K1 inverse times delta P that's equal to minus 7 over 2.8695 and that will give me an incremental displacement that's equal to minus 2.4394 millimeter so this value is our incremental displacement is actually this one so the total displacement w2 will be equal to minus 2.0896 is the total displacement after the first increment minus 2.4394 is the incremental displacement after the second increment and my total displacement will be equal to 4.5290 millimeter so i can repeat this procedure over and over again to calculate the full displacement field. Now, uh, if I want to increase the accuracy, I will reduce the force increments, delta P, and try to get a better approximation. Now, let's see how we can implement this approach and apply it on the solution of the shallow truss element. Now let's take a look at the implementation of the incremental solution algorithm. So we have the same parameters. So the algorithm works this way. First, I'm initializing all the displacements. So it's very straightforward. For every increment, I'm calculating the new tangent stiffness matrix. And then calculate the incremental displacement by applying the incremental load and I add all the incremental displacement to calculate the total displacement at the end of an increment. So this loop continues until we solve for, the, for every increment. Now as a first step, I'm calculating it for 15 increments. So I'm just applying, I'm, the total load is equal to 80 newtons. I applied in 15 increments so at every increment I calculate the incremental load and figure out what the total uh, displacement is now when we look at the load deformation graph of course as expected as between increments when we have more nonlinearity our results deviates from the analytical solution but as we approach as the nonlinearity and the load deformation curve decreases, we start to trace the analytical curve one more time. So between these two points, there's a big nonlinearity, the large nonlinearity in the system. So our errors in this incremental solution increases. This is actually expecting because we are not really trying to minimize these errors at every increment. So this is something that we should be add, adding to this algorithm. We should calculate the incremental displacement and then by using some certain approaches, we should try to minimize the errors and we should put this, have this displacement, put it on the analytical solution. Okay. And we will be doing this by adding an iterative solution at every increment. We calculate an initial guess with the incremental solution. We perform some iterations and then we try to figure out a, point, a displacement value or a point on this curve. Okay. 
And as we said, if I increase the number of increments, I can trace this nonlinear curve. And in the second case, this is what I do. Now assume that we have 1000 increments and I'm using the same incremental solution, no iterations. And as you can see, we can trace the full load deformation curve. But of course, this incremental solution approach cannot be applied to, to actual problems because we don't know how many increments that we want to use. We don't know the, how much error we get. So you don't want to try different increments and plot all the load deformation curve and see if the error, how much the error decreases as you increase the increments. Instead of doing that, as a next step, we will be adding an iterative solution so that we will reduce the errors at every incremental displacement. With, this, with the incremental iterative solution approach, we will see that we will be tracing the full load deformation path of a nonlinear system.